I, like many of you, can openly admit Final Fantasy VII is the greatest Final Fantasy game of all time. For me, as a 90s kid, something about saving the dying planet just meshed well with me. I don't know if it was my 90s kids TV shows, programming my young mind, and brainwashing me to recycle and save the planet. That, plus the story and cast of characters, everything being so iconic, just meshes well and left me with a feeling of wanting more. But as we got more... I just became more confused. And in the end, I just got more questions than answers. Questions like, who is this? More importantly, since the story is shifting in this new direction, the storylines of past games just seem to be making things more difficult to understand. Before moving forward, let me build the scene for you. Let me get you guys on the same page with me. There seems to be some common rules in the Final Fantasy VII world. The common rules are the planet. The planet is like our planet, similar to Earth, but the planet in Final Fantasy VII is called Gaia. The being named Genova. Without too much context, Genova was an alien that crash landed into Gaia, and that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to talk about. The last constant is the planet's spiritual energy known as the life stream. The life stream is connected to all living things. Now that we've established this, in the end of 7 Remake, Aerith has a monologue that seemed to be like a hype up speech, but it's so much more than that. There's no greater threat to the planet than him. Sephiroth has to be stopped. He has to be. And that's why... I'm asking you to help me. I know that together we can do this. But if we do, we'll be changing more than fate itself. If we succeed, if we win, we'll be changing ourselves. What does she mean? Before we get too far, I wanted to take a mini side quest here. Aerith's name is kind of an interesting subject in the Final Fantasy VII universe. The original name for Aerith was Aeris in Final Fantasy VII. Aeris would later be changed to Aerith, where ultimately that would be her finalized identity. But why? Well, the easiest way to explain this is the Japanese to English translation just didn't cross over too well. Her name was always Aerith, but crossing over from Japanese to English, we ended up with Aeris, and that's just kind of the easiest way to explain it. But this does do us a favor. It separates two moments in time. The original Final Fantasy VII, where her name is Aeris, and the remake where her name is Aerith. But if we take our red yarn and tinfoil hats, we come up with some interesting things with those names. The recognized definition for the meaning of Aeris and Aerith both mean earth and flowers. But let's do a little bit of magic here. Remove the A from the spelling and we get some interesting information. Aeris, or Aeris, known as the god of strife, meaning encouragement of conflict between men and gods. Now, if you remove the A from Aerith, you end up with Aerith. The name still holds roughly the same, meaning flowers. But if we look at it through the new information, Aeris from game one might be encouraging Aerith from game two to continue conflict between Sephiroth and the planet. Also, Cloud's last name is Strife. I know it's a far stretch, but it's an interesting concept, don't you think? Okay, with that said, let's move on. Now, as the new game comes in, we're teased with a Midgar that seems Mako energy free and Zack being alive along with Biggs. So we're left to think, how and why is all this possible? And where is this story going? I have some theories using the three constants I mentioned earlier, Genova, Gaia, and the life stream. Multiple timelines. I don't think this is exactly multiple timelines. I think this is something to do with the life stream. So the life stream being a constant might carry more weight than we assume. In OG7, we just assume life stream is Mako energy, aka materia magic, and nothing else. But what if through the life stream, characters can in theory reach out and interact with others or moments in time? So there is only one timeline, but through that timeline, it can be manipulated through the life stream. Careful now. That which lies ahead. 
does not yet exist. Hence why Sephiroth seems to be present but not present and Aerith just seems to know more than she's actually letting on. Now, if you haven't played the OG Final Fantasy VII and don't have much backstory, none of this might make sense. But throughout OG VII and VII Remake, they're just moments that seem to be out-of-body experiences for Cloud. Memories and moments or conversations or visions that seem to just come out of nowhere. I think this is due for Cloud having such a bad case of Mako poisoning and the fact that he has S cells in it. He might be more in tune with the live stream than we actually think he really is. Okay, so my next question is about the newcomer to the series. An optimal candidate. My name is Chadley. Chadley. I'm assuming Chadley has a bigger impact in the game's story than we are aware of. He kind of just pops up out of nowhere, but kind of has this resemblance to someone. Both being creations of Hojo, I'm not surprised they share similarities. Now, if you didn't complete Final Fantasy VII Integrate, you might have missed on some important details that aren't so important at the moment, but the Integrate introduces characters from Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus. Cerberus. Dirge of Cerberus. Cerberus. And and the deep ground. And you get a taste of what's possibly coming in the future and, and maybe in game three? Up next, I wanted to touch up on Zack being alive in Rebirth and the game being two discs. Is there going to be multiple games? Are we going to play disc one being the normal game and disc two being Zack's game? Personally, I don't think so because the timelines between Zack's return and Cloud and everyone else leaving just doesn't sync up. I'm back. So now my question goes as follows. If Zack and Cloud are presumed to be missing for five years and they return, is Cloud still going to be Mako Poison? If we're going off the Crisis Core timeline, Zack and Cloud return and OG7 and Final Fantasy VII Remake start. So in theory, let's just say it doesn't take them five years to return to Midgar. So going back to my three constants from before, are we to assume Zack is in the live stream? When someone dies, they return to the planet. So the planet is connected to the live stream. And when someone is connected to Mako, they are in theory connected to the live stream. So in theory, Zack and Cloud could be connected since Cloud is carrying out Zack's legacy. I am your living legacy. There's mild evidence of this happening in Ever Crisis, the game that's on the phone that no one played. So. If we go to the Cloud's backstory, Cloud seems to be struggling with who he is, but it does seem like someone else is talking for him from beyond. So if Zack isn't exactly in the current timeline physically, he still might have some important impact in the living world. Now I wanted to point something out. Maybe it's nothing of importance, but it's something to consider. Cloud in OG7 was Mako poisoned again and was wheelchair bound. In the Rebirth trailers, we see similar moments. If you're not looking hard, you're going to miss it for sure. The only time Cloud comes back to normal is when him and Tifa fall into the live stream. We also see that Aerith is also in a coma. When Marlene and Zack are talking, she reveals that when Aerith wakes up, a bad man is going to kill her. This might tell that although everyone is in the same place, they might not all be in the same realm. The only person we can confirm died during the fight in Sector 7 was Biggs. Wedge lived and Jesse is dancing in the gold saucer, so maybe she survived? This would all make sense if we're using this afterlife life stream theory and this new real world theory, and that's why Biggs is alive. Although Marlene and Almira being there makes things pretty unclear, so again, we're not sure what's going on there. But I'm pretty confident in saying Zack isn't in a different timeline, but he is in the same timeline, possibly in the live stream communicating with the real world. So now let's wrap this up. I want to talk about a game and cast of characters from Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, The First Soldier. <laughs> In Ever Crisis, you're introduced to a cast of characters that you could consider the first soldiers. 
you have Matt, Lucia, and Glenn. These are the first of the Shinra soldiers who undergo special training. So currently at the time of writing this script, the first soldier story hasn't given much beyond the introduction of Teen Sephiroth, the hero. During the announcement trailers, I noticed a cloaked man that seemed out of place. This could be an extremely long shot here, but there might be some connection between this guy and Glenn from the first soldier story. なぜそれを知っている。俺は正義の味方だからな。なるほど。では。Glenn seems to have this uncle vibe about him with him and Sephiroth, so maybe he plays a big role in this new story as a returning character giving the context of Sephiroth's past. Again, very big speculation, but it could be an exciting new storyline bringing back Glenn and introducing this whole new story of him knowing Sephiroth as a kid. Who, who doesn't want this? I want this. You want this. You just don't know you want this. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy. If you guys had some theories of your own or ideas, throw them down in the comments. Let's have some conversations down there. I really want to hear what you guys think, your opinions of what I thought, and everything that goes along with it. Again, this is just me speculating and having some fun with conversation. So drop some stuff down in the comments, and I will get back to most of you guys. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Peace.